All right, so today I'm going to explain you energetics of glycolysis. So in this particular video, so I will be covering uh, glycolysis proper and that is conversion of glucose into pyruvate molecules. And then I will take you into anaerobic glycolysis and aerobic glycolysis and then we will calculate total number of ATPs that you get in glycolysis total number of ATPs that you get in anaerobic glycolysis and total number of ATPs that you get in aerobic glycolysis. Okay, let's start now. So in the very first reaction, that is conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate by hexokinase or glucokinase, there will be consumption of one ATP here. So that is I am writing in red color. Then in the third reaction done by phosphofructokinase 1, where fructose 6-phosphate is converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, there is consumption of one more ATP. So, I will write minus one ATP here. Okay, so I will just write one minus ATP. Then, in the fourth step, that is two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is going into two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. During that time, so NAD plus, gets into this reaction, NAD plus gets in, two molecules of NAD plus and they will come out as two molecules of NADH plus 2H plus. Because we are considering two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, making two molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, that's why two NAD plus are needed here, so which are going out as two NADH plus 2H plus. Then in the next step, that is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate done by phosphoglycerate kinase enzyme, there will be production of 2 ATPs. 2 ATP gets into the reaction and 2 ATPs comes out. Always remember, we are considering 2 molecules of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. If you are considering only 1 molecule of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, you get 1 ATP. Since we are considering two molecules here, making two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate, so two ATPs are made. Now, 3-phosphoglycerate converted to 2-phosphoglycerate and then 2-phosphoglycerate converted to two molecules of phosphoenol pyruvate done by enolase enzyme, no energy produced there. Now, two molecules of phosphoenol pyruvate converted to two molecules of pyruvate. During this step, again two ADPs gets into the reaction and you get two ATPs. Okay, now if you look at the glycolysis now, glucose is all the way down converted to two pyruvates. During this process, initially there are consumption of two ATPs, one in the first step, other is in the third step. After that, you are making two NADH plus two H plus, you are making two ATPs here, that's a substrate level phosphorylation done by phosphoglycerate kinase and then you are making two ATPs down here by pyruvate kinase, okay? Now let's look at how many ATPs you are going to get at, under anaerobic situation. Especially when this anaerobic um, glycolysis will go on, whenever red blood means whenever the tissue do not have sufficient oxygen, like sternously exercising skeletal muscle or maybe myocardial infarction tissue, cardiac tissue wherever there is a myocardial infarction or maybe a new skin graft. So, and red blood cells which do not have mitochondria, obviously they cannot conduct aerobic glycolysis there. So, under anaerobic, anaerobic situations, your 2 pyruvate here will be converted to 2 lactate. So, 2 pyruvates taken into 2 lactate by lactate dehydrogenase. During this step what happens? These two NADH plus 2H plus which are produced by glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, they will be consumed by lactate dehydrogenase and they will be written back as 2 NAD plus. Now, this is an important thing here because in red blood cells to conduct glycolysis or to continue glycolysis and also under anaerobic situation to continue glycolysis, there is a need for NAD plus. There should be a constant supply of NAD plus and that is provided by lactate dehydrogenase. That's exactly the reason why under anaerobic situation, two pyruvates will get into two lactate formation, thereby two NADH plus two H plus are consumed 
and returning them as 2NAD plus so that glycolysis continues. Now let's calculate total number of ATPs that you get under an aerobic situation. So an aerobic glycolysis under anaerobic glycolysis what you have done here is you have produced four ATPs see two ATPs here and two ATPs here so you have produced four ATPs four ATPs you have produced and then you have consumed two ATPs initially so minus two ATPs here produce two ATPs sorry four ATPs consumes two ATPs so net gain it will be two so net gain is 2 ATPs. So this is what you get under anaerobic glycolysis. Now let's see what, what are the total number of ATPs you get under aerobic glycolysis. So in the aerobic glycolysis, basically aerobic glycolysis will go on whenever the cell has got sufficient oxygen and cell has got mitochondria. Now when the cell has mitochondria and sufficient oxygen, these two pyruvates will go into mitochondrial matrix by pyruvate transporter and in the mitochondrial matrix two pyruvates will be converted to two acetyl coase during this time there will be consumption of two NAD plus and two NAD plus will release two NADH plus two H plus okay now this during this process there will be release of carbon dioxide one carbon dioxide is going out carbon means two carbon dioxides will go out because you are making two acetyl coase pyruvate is a three carbon molecule acetyl coase is a two carbon molecule it means you are releasing one carbon from pyruvate into acetyl coase it means two pyruvates into two acetyl coase you are releasing two carbon dioxide now what will happen to two acetyl coase molecules these two acetyl coase molecules as i have written here so they will go get into individual TCA cycle reaction. One acetyl CoA gets into one TCA cycle, another acetyl CoA gets into another TCA cycle. Now let's see how many ATP means what will happen to acetyl CoA in a TCA cycle. This is a condensed TCA cycle here. You can watch my TCA cycle video in uh, in a connect in the, in the link that I am that is appearing now. Now. Acetyl CoA is completely oxidized into two carbon dioxide molecules here because see there is a release of one carbon dioxide, release of another carbon dioxide. Two carbon dioxide in a, two carbons in acetyl CoA released as two carbon dioxide. Now there is a production of one ATP here, sorry NADH plus H plus is produced, another NADH plus H plus produced and third NADH plus H plus produced and there is a production of one FADH2 and production of GTP. Now, same thing will happen with another acetyl CoA molecule. So, two carbon dioxides released, three NADH plus produced, one FADH2 produced, and one GTP produced. Now, let's calculate how many ATPs effectively you get from one TCA cycle. In order to calculate that, you need to know how many ATPs you get from oxidation of NADH plus H plus into NAD in the electron transport chain, and how many ATPs you get from oxidation of FADH2 in electron transport chain. So oxidation of NADH plus H plus is equivalent to 2.5 ATPs. So oxidation of FADH2 is equivalent to 1.5 ATPs. Now in each TCA cycle, so one TCA cycle here, see NADH oxidation will give you 2.5, another NADH 2.5 and the third NADH gives you 2.5 and then one GTP equivalent to 1 ATP and then 1 FADH2 oxidation will give you 1.5 ATPs. Now in total let's calculate 2.5, 2.5 and 2.5 and that is 7.5, 7 7.5 plus 1.5 here and that is 9 and then 1 extra ATP here from GTP so that is 10. So total 10 ATPs you are going to get from 1 TCA cycle. Like that we have two TCA cycle here, so 10 more ATPs come from this acetyl CoA oxidation. And now we need to count the number of ATPs that come from oxidation of pyruvate into acetyl CoA. Two pyruvate into two acetyl CoA, it means you get two NADH plus H plus and there you get 
5 ATPs, 2.5 plus 2.5, so 5 ATPs. Now you can total them out. And also note that in glycolysis, see the glucose into pyruvate, so the NADH that is produced in the cytoplasm, it can be transported into mitochondrial matrix. NADH can come into mitochondria, participates in electron transport chain oxidation by a shuttle mechanism. And that is worth 1 NADH plus H plus, it is worth either 2.5 ATPs or 1.5 ATPs depending on the shuttle mechanism. Okay, if the cell uses malate aspartate shuttle mechanism to transport cytoplasmic NADH into mitochondria, so it will be transported as NADH plus H plus, it means you get 2.5 ATPs for each NADH plus H plus. Now you have 2 NADH plus H plus, it means you get 2.5 plus 2.5, so you get 5 ATPs from cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus in the mitochondria. If the cell uses glycerol phosphate, glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism, so it is going to transfer NADH, cytoplasmic NADH as FADH2 and 1 FADH2 equal to 1.5 ATPs. It means you have 2 NADH going in as 2 FADH, you get 3 ATPs there. there. So that is a 3 number. Now let us calculate how many number of ATPs you get from aerobic glycolysis. Aerobic glycolysis that is complete oxidation of glucose into 6 carbon dioxide. In order to calculate total number of ATPs, you need to know which shuttle mechanism that we are using. By default, majority of the cells, they will use glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism. So, let us calculate glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism for cytoplasmic NADH plus H plus. Okay? Now, you, you are consuming 2 ATPs initially there. And then you are getting 2 NADH plus 2 H plus, which are equivalent to 3 ATPs. This is 3 ATPs here. So, I will write that 3 ATP coming from NADH plus H plus. And then you have pyruvate going into acetyl CoA. 2 pyruvates into 2 acetyl CoA. You have 5 ATPs there. So, I will write 5 ATPs here. And then each acetyl CoA is giving you 10 plus 10, 10, 10 ATP. So, that is 10 here and another. 10 ATPs there. Okay? And also note that you are going to get 2 ATPs here and 2 ATPs here in the substrate level phosphorylation. So, there are 4 ATPs there. So, that, those 4 ATPs here. So, now if you calculate in total, so you have 8 plus 4 and that is 12. So, 2 here and then number 1 here. So, you get 32. Okay? So, 32 ATPs in total, you get 32 ATPs, but you need to note that out of 32 ATPs, you need to take out these 2 ATPs which are initially consumed. So, I will take out minus 2 ATPs there, minus 2 ATPs, so you get total number 30 gain, 30 ATPs which are the gain, 30 ATPs. These are the total number of ATPs you get from oxidation of 1 glucose into 6 carbon dioxide molecules provided your cell is using default glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle mechanism to transport cytoplasmic NADH into mitochondria as FADH2. Now what if your cell is using malate aspartate shuttle mechanism which is transporting cytoplasmic NADH as NADH into the mitochondrial matrix. So the number will change only here because so this is the number I have written for glycerol phosphate mechanism. So if it uses malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, so instead of 3, you get 5. So let's change that number. So we have 5 here and then 5 from oxidation of FADH2 into, sorry, NADH, NAD into NAD, uh, means pyruvate to acetyl CoA, you get 2 NADH, that's 5 here. One acetyl CoA in TCA cycle 10, another acetyl CoA in TCA cycle 10 at substrate level phosphorylation in glycolysis it is 4 so you get total number 34 here you get 34 number 34 ATPs but you have to take out 2 ATPs which are initially consumed so 34 minus 2 so total number of net gain here from 1 glucose to 6 carbon dioxide will be 32 ATPs so 
under aerobic glycolysis when glucose is completely oxidized into car six carbon dioxide molecules so the total number of atp is it depends on which shuttle mechanism your cell is using if it is using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism which is a default majority of cells will use that so you are going to get 30 atps if the cell is using malate aspartate shuttle mechanism to transport cytoplasmic nadh into mitochondria electron transport chain then you are going to get 32 atps so the number will change there so in the exam Questions can be asked in any way. So it can be glucose to pyruvate, two pyruvates. Then if you consider that, so it will be 4, four ATPs minus 2 ATPs, so 2 ATPs net gain at substrate level phosphorylation. If you are not considering NADH plus H plus. If you consider NADH plus H plus going into mitochondrial matrix using glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism, that is 3 ATPs, it means three these 3 ATPs and then 2 ATP. So, there will be 5 ATPs from glucose to 2 pyruvate under aerobic situation. If it uses malate aspartate shuttle mechanism, so you get 2 ATPs net gain from substrate level plus 5 from NADH plus H plus using malate aspartate. So, that becomes 7 ATPs under aerobic condition. Under anaerobic condition, glucose into 2 lactate, you just gain 2 ATPs there. Okay. And if it's a complete oxidation, you get either 30 or 32 depending on shuttle mechanism. That's all about uh, energetic soft glycolysis. Thanks for watching.